Assalamu alaikum everyone I am Shehwar Zara I hope you all are fine Today our topic of discussion is transcriptomics So before we start our topic transcriptomics let's understand this term omics as you have heard the words genomics proteomics metabolomics transcriptomics in all these words you can see that one thing is in common and that is the word omics So what does this word omics mean The term omics apart from the biological context i am talking about so this word omics it is basically derived from the latin suffix om o m e om and this latin suffix om it means mass or many thus if we want to define omics apart from the biological meaning it can be defined as a mass of measurements per endpoint and with respect to the biological context this suffix omics it is used to refer to study of large sets of biological molecules so it means that all the large sets of biological molecules they are studied under this term omics and uh, basically this uh, you can say this field omics it was evolved after the realization that dna is not alone the process that regulates the complex biological processes and when this real, uh, realization it dawned it resulted in development vast range of developments in molecular biology and all these developments that were made in molecular biology they are together described with the term omics so the field omics it ranges from genomics genomics you know it is basically focused on the genome proteomics it is focused on large sets of proteins metabolomics it is focused on large sets of molecules the metabolome So this is uh, what this term omics actually means. So what is transcriptomics? Transcriptomics is basically the study of complete set of RNAs and this complete set of RNAs is basically your transcriptome. And so the definition of transcriptomics is the study of complete set of RNAs encoded by the genome of specific cell or organism at a specific time or under a specific set of conditions. So this is your transcriptomics and the main point is that it is the study of complete set of RNAs. Transcriptomics uh, it encompasses everything related to RNAs and this includes the transcription, expression levels, functions, locations, trafficking and degradation and along with this it also includes the structure of transcripts and their parent genes with regard to start sites that are you know that are 5 prime and 3 prime end sequences splicing patterns and post transcriptional modifications as well and this transcriptomics it covers all types of transcripts including messenger rnas micro rnas and different types of long non coding rnas and the modern transcriptomics it uses high throughput methods to analyze the expression of multiple transcripts in different physiological or pathological conditions and thus this technology it is uh, rapidly expanding our understanding of the relationship between the transcriptome and the phenotype across a wide range of living entities you can say here i have used the term high throughput method so what does this term means and because we will be discussing this terms many times in the successive slides so the term high throughput method it basically uh, simply a faster method you can say which allows a greater number of samples to be processed in the same or you can say the less time so this is what high throughput means in the post genomic era this transcriptomics it has basically become an aspiring field of research in the life sciences field and uh, the you can say this interest in this field it is basically due to three reasons the first is that the transcriptomics analysis it reflects the dynamics of genomic expression the second is because the transcriptomics study it supports the proteomic research and this transcriptome analysis it not only helps to explain the inconsistency of the coding gene number with the number of protein translated but it is also helpful in you can say studying the translation regulation and the third is that the structure and functional studies of the non protein coding rna 
it spends the scope of basically uh, the transcriptomics all these three points and uh, as you know that this uh, you uh, that the protein coding genes in addition to the protein coding genes both prokaryotes and the eukaryotic genomes they contain non protein sequences non protein coding sequences as well and this just transcriptomics studies it has shown that the vast majority of eukaryotic genome it is basically the rnas for example if we take the example here more than 93% of the human genome it is transcribed into rnas and among this only 2% is from the coding region so this is uh, you can see that this is how the transcriptomics it is helpful and uh, this is the reason why this uh, great interest is being induced in this research field then there is a technology named as ngs its short form is ngs and it is the abbreviation of next generation sequencing and this methodology it has basically allowed a higher throughput throughput i have told you what it means throughput and resolution level of transcriptome studies so let's see that what this ngs technology is and what is its uh, what functions it performs so this ngs technology it is basically helpful because it rapidly sequence whole genomes secondly it zoom in to deeply sequence target regions the third is that it utilizes rna sequencing to discover novel rna variants and splice sites and it also quantify messenger rnas for gene expression analysis then it allows the researchers to analyze epigenetic factors such as genome wide dna methylation and dna protein interaction Then another advantage of this NGS technology is that it sequences cancer samples to study rare somatic variants, or you can say um, along with the tumor subclones and other. And lastly, it studies the human microbiome and it helps in study the human microbiome and discover novel pathogens. So because of this reason, this uh, next generation sequencing technology. Uh, has gained much interest and uh, as i have told you before that it has enabled us to understand this uh, like this field of transcriptomics more clearly and at the you can say high throughput and resolution level so first we will discuss that what was happening before the transcriptomics Uh, field evolution and later on we will discuss that how this trans transcriptomics it evolved throughout the time so uh, as you know that the studies of individual transcripts it were being performed several decades uh, even before any transcriptomics approaches they were available for example in 1970s in late 1970s libraries of silk moth silk moth messenger rnas they were collected and they were converted to complementary dna for storage and this was done using reverse transcript teams and in the 1980s low throughput sanger sequencing it was begin to be used to sequence random individual transcripts and from the from the libraries that are known as express sequence tags ests they are denoted by ests so what are these ests or the express sequence tag Express sequence tag is basically a short subsequence of a complementary DNA sequence, and they may be uh, used to identify gene transcripts, and they are instrumental in gene discovery and gene sequence determination. This EST, uh, you can say this EST, it came to prominence during the nineteens, nineteen nineties, and as an efficient method, and it was at that time used to determine the gene content of an organism without sequencing the entire genome. And during that time, other methods of quantification of individual transcripts, such as northern bloating, nylon membrane arrays, and later on the reverse transcriptase quantitative PCR. they were also popular but these methods were basically laborious and they could only capture a tiny subsection of transcriptomes transcriptome so as a result uh, in this manner the technique or you can say the transcriptome as a whole it wasn't expressed till that time and until the you can say the high throughput high throughput technologies were developed 
so this was entire that uh, what happened for the transcriptome development and this transcriptomic technique development so now we will discuss about how this field of transcriptomics it evolved over time and we will be starting from the rna discovery and as i have told you before that this, tra this transcriptomics it is basically the study of rna and rna you know it is a single stranded nucleic acid and the single stranded nucleic acid was uh, not you can say the separated from the dna until the sigma, uh, central dogma you know it was formulated by frankis crick in 1958 and central dogma uh, if i repeat here you know it is basically the idea that the genetic information it is transcribed from dna to rna and then translated from rna into protein later in 1961 jacob and monod they proposed a model that the protein coding gene it is transcribed into a special short lived intermediate that is you can say associated with the ribosome and which was later on designated by the name messenger rna then in uh, then you have in 1971 sharp and roberts they showed that the messenger rna sequence of the adenovirus displayed discontinuous distribution in the genome and therefore they suggested a typical eukaryotic uh, that this suggested that the typical eukaryotic gene it consists of exons the protein coding sequence and the introns the known protein coding sequence so it was done by sharp and roberts then you have altman and she and uh, in 1970s uh, they what they revealed that uh, they revealed that the rna can function as a catalyst at worst and in 1982 uh, kruger he put forward the ribozyme concept and the ribozyme concept that was put forward by the kruger it basically demonstrated that rna could act as both genetic material and the biological catalyst then you have early 90s in early 90s it was observed by a number of scientists independently that uh, the rna it inhibit uh, rna inhibit gene expression in plants and fungi with unknown mechanism so this was uh, like this was seen in 1990s early 1990s so that was before the development of the field of transcriptomics then the word transcriptome it was basically first used in 1990s and uh, and the attempt first attempt at capturing uh, you can say capturing a partial human transcriptome it was published in 1991 and it reported 609 messenger rna sequences from the human brain then in 1995 one of the earliest sequencing based transcriptomic method was developed and this method was basically serial analysis of gene expression that is sage 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 and this method it worked by sanger sequencing of concatenated random transcript fragments concatenated basically means a uh, it is something that links together in chains or series linking uh, together in chains or series it is the meaning of concatenate as i have told you before in that in 1991 human transcriptome first attempt at capturing the human transcriptome was made then in 2008 two, two human transcriptome that were composed of you can say million of transcript derived sequencing that uh, and it basically covered 16 you can see 16000 genes it was published and by 2015 transcriptome had been published for hundred of individuals and this transcriptomes of different diseases or you can say diseases states tissues or even single cells are now currently they are now routinely generated one more thing i want to mention here is that that when in 1995 sage was uh it was introduced this method was introduced a variant of sage uh that used high throughput sequencing technique it was also introduced and it name was digital gene expression analysis and it was basically briefly used so this was how this uh, transcriptomist evolved over time and you have seen that from uh, i have discussed about starting from the rna discovery till the developments and the first uh first human transcriptome how it was discovered we have seen how this transcriptomic fields has evolved and it has developed over the time
So here you can see our graph and this graph is basically shows the transcriptomic methods that were used over time and uh, it is basically expressing the published papers since 1990s and these papers basically published on the black line you can see it basically refers to the RNA sequencing paper published on RNA sequencing the red one you can see it refers to the papers published on the RNA microarray blue one it represents the express sequence tag and the yellow one it expressed the serial analysis of gene expression so you can see that these how these publications were being made so now let's see that uh, what the transcriptome analysis it allow us so once the genome it has been sequenced transcriptome analysis it allows us to understand the expression of gene at the transcription level which provides us more information on the gene structure number one then regulation of gene expression gene product function and genome dynamics and this transcriptome analysis it will uh, further it reveals the regulation network of biological processes and um, it also eventually you can say give some guidance in disease diagnosis clinical therapy and crop improvement so all these are the you can say uh, benefits and these are all the applications of the transcriptome analysis now let's discuss the development of contemporary techniques so there are basically uh, two dominant contemporary techniques that were microarrays and RNA sequencing they were developed in the mid 1990s microarray and in 2000 mid 2000 RNA sequencing was developed and so what is this microarray microarray is basically um, what they do is that they measure the abundances of defined set of transcripts and how they do is that they do it through the hybridization to an array of complementary props and this method of microarrays it was first published in 1995 and after that microarray technology it has allowed the assays assay of thousands of transcripts simultaneously and uh, why it is uh, useful the reason behind is that uh, because uh, this all you can means you can say the assay of thousands of transcript at the same time it can be performed at greatly reduced cost per gene and so thus it is labor saving until 2000s 2000 uh, they supported oligonucleotide array and fx matrix high density array they were the method of choice for transcriptional profiling then you have rna sequencing rna sequencing basically refers to the sequencing of transcript complementary dns and uh, this technique uh, was heavily you can say it has been heavily influenced by the development of high throughput sequencing technologies and the massific, uh, massively parallel signature sequencing that is your mpws this massively parallel signature sequencing it is basically an example of uh, high throughput sequencing technology and it was uh, you can say it is an early example that is uh, it basically based on generating 16 to 20 base pair sequencing and this is done through a complex series of hybridization and it was first used in 2004 to validate the expression of transpower 4 genes and uh, this expression was validated in Arabidiosis thaliana the earliest RNA sequencing work it was published in 2006 and uh, with tens power 5 transcript sequence and uh, this tens power 5 transcript they were sequenced using the 454 technology so what is this 454 technology or you can say 454 sequencing it is basically used uh, 454 sequencing it used a large scale parallel pro sequencing system and this pro sequencing sequence uh, system it is capable of sequencing around 400 to 600 megabases of dna per hour run 10 per uh, dna per 10 hour run on the genome sequencer so this is your 454 technology 
Then this, uh, you can say RNA sequencing, it began to increase its popularity after 2008 and the reason was that the uh, development of Celexa, you can say Illumina technologies. So while the Celexa and Illumina technologies, they were, uh, they gained popularity, the reason behind it was that they allowed 10th power 9 transcript sequences to be recorded. And uh, so this yield, this 10th power 9 transcript sequencing, this yield is now sufficient for the accurate quantitation of uh, entire human transcriptome. So that's why these, uh, this RNA sequencing, it gained popularity in 2008. Then is uh, data gathering. So the generating data on RNA transcripts, it can be achieved through uh, either of the two main principles. The first one is your EST or RNA sequencing that is sequencing of individual transcripts and the second is hybridization of transcript to an order array of nucleotide probes that is your microarray so microarray is basically as i have told you before that it is the hybridization of transcript so these two are the method for generating uh, data to uh, generating data on the rna transcript to gather the generating data on the rna transcript so your first step is the isolation of RNA and uh, before the transcript it can be recorded all transcriptomic methods they require RNA to first be isolated from the experimental organism on which we are performing the experiment and uh, although the biological systems they are you can say they are incredibly um, diverse RNA station techniques they are broadly similar and all these techniques they involve the similar uh, processes that are mechanical disruption of the cell or tissues then the disruption of RNAs with cowtropic salts so what is this uh, keotropic salt or you can say keotropic agent so this keotropic agent is basically a molecule in water solution and uh, this can disrupt the hydrogen bonding network between water molecules so it has an effect on the stability of the you can say the native states of the other molecules means native states means that the states in which the molecules are present in the solution mainly the macromolecules i'm talking about here and macromolecules specifically you know they are proteins nucleic acid and how they affect these macromolecules uh, they affected through uh, weakening the hydrophobic effect so this is keotropic salts then the third step of the RNA extraction is the separation of, uh, you can say, the disruption. Disruption of the macromolecules and the nucleotide complexes. The fourth step is separation of RNA from undesired biomolecules, including DNA. And uh, the concentration of the RNA is uh, increased via, you can say, the concentration of RNA via precipitation from the solution or you can say the elution from the solid matrix. So these are some of the basic uh, steps through which the RNA extraction is done and these all these steps are common in all the RNA extraction techniques. So once the RNA is isolated, this isolated RNA, it may additionally be treated with DNAs and the reason behind this treating with DNAs is to digest any traces of DNA if present. Before we have studied that we have to remove the, uh, the DNA, the biomolecules we have studied that we have to remove them but still if some DNA is present so you use these DNAs in order to remove that. And uh, it is also necessary to enrich the messenger RNA as total because the total RNA stretches they are typically 98% ribosomal RNA. So it is necessary that you enrich it uh, the total RNA in messenger RNA. So how this enrichment can be done? The this enrichment of transcript which I have been talking that they should be enriched with the messenger RNA. This can be def uh, can be performed by poly affinity method or by depletion of ribosomal RNA using sequence specific probes and uh, this degraded RNA it may basically uh, it may affect the downstream results for example it may affect the results like messenger RNA enrichment from the degraded sample uh, what it will do is that it will result in the depletion of five prime messenger RNA ends and uneven, uneven signal across the length of the transcript will be transferred so this is how this degraded RNA it affects the downstream results 
then you have the term snap freezing uh, snap freezing uh, of tissue uh, prior to the prior to the RNA isolation was typical and uh, now the care is taken to reduce exposure to the RNA enzymes when isolation is completed so what is this snap freezing so snap freezing uh, you must have read this term in the research scientific papers uh, it basically describes a process by which a sample is very quickly lowered to the temperature below minus 70 degrees Celsius and uh, how this is achieved that the this temperature minus below 9, minus 70 degrees Celsius is achieved by submerging a sample in liquid nitrogen. So what this submerging in the liquid nitrogen do is that it prevents water from crystallizing and uh, when it form ice. So the purpose behind this snap freezing is that it preserves the structure of the sample. For example, RNA protein. So it will uh, it will keep them in their structure so this is why snap freezing is used and uh, as I have told you before that the snap freezing tissue uh, snap freezing of tissue it is uh, typical in RNA isolation and uh, later on the enzyme you can say the RNA once the isolation is completed it is uh, it's exposure to the RNAs is being reduced then you have a concept AST. AST is uh, basically the abbreviation of uh, the express sequence tag. So what is this AST? AST is basically a short nucleotide sequence that is generated from a single RNA transcript. So what happened is that the RNA it is first copied as complementary DNA by a reverse transcriptase enzyme and uh, before the resultant complementary DNA sequence. This EST method, it does not require any prior knowledge of the organism from which they come. Therefore, uh, they can also be made from mixture of organisms or you can say the environmental samples. Although now higher throughput methods are now used, EST libraries, they are commonly provide sequence information for early microarray designs. For example, here you can take the example of barley gene chip. Uh, it was designed from 3,50,000 previously sequenced ESTs and ESTs I have told you that it is a short nucleotide sequence. So uh, this was for today's lecture and I hope that you have uh, understand what I have uh, told you so far. In the next lecture we will discuss serial and cap analysis of gene expression that is your SAGE and uh, microarrays means basically we will discuss other techniques of uh, data gathering in the transcriptomic fields and if you want to uh, study these things which you have discussed in today's lecture uh, in detail and in the written form then you can visit these sites and thank you for watching